right, so cabinets arrived. It's, uh, they arrived yesterday, Wednesday, so I guess on day three they arrived. Today's day four, uh, and we have uh, one L shape, one straight, and one little like extra area. And so we have three separate sections and a couple of closets that are gonna be going in the, uh, in the storage area. Uh, but Kyle and uh, Trevor and my dad are gonna dig through getting the boxes open, getting them put in place. I think we have four 1540s, which is my favorite cabinet by far. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll work through leveling them and setting them up. And then we have some custom counter tops coming for them. It's a pretty, pretty big project. So the, um, the, the cabinets that are going in here are the MSS Plus variant, uh, the stuff that you see uh, that are part of our design area of the yarn building. Um, these are my favorite cabinets in the world. Um, very familiar. Uh, I actually really like Lista, Rousseau, Haley, Bald, uh, bald Head, um, all great cabinets. I like these the most. I mean, these, these I think are best suited for what we're doing in the garage combined with, we'll show you in, in a little bit, this entire multi-pallet setup back here is basically every single tool that Tonic Sonic makes. Uh, and so the foam inlays are what really is sort of icing on the cake on these amazing cabinets. So we have 890s, we have 720 millimeters, we have 1540s, we've got the uh, closets, we've got basically every cabinet they make in here in some form or fashion. Uh, but we're going to be uh, digging through these, getting them put, put into position and obviously sharing the process of putting them together. So uh, this will be an all day and probably some of tomorrow project for three or four guys. I'm excited. What are you? What are you inside dimensions to beam to beam? So you're at 203. This one doesn't have the baby lines on it. No baby you lines. Need 30 seconds. That's a, that's a construction. That's a man's tape there. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna take like a weekend, and I'm just gonna start I'm gonna just programming. It'd be awesome. Sit there with the tape. Because it's easier when you tell lines. me you shot out four and three eighths or four and three sixteenths or five and nine sixteenths rather than five no, and four and a quarter two plus the, one baby. Yeah, I know. It's easy. I have to do that, then I have to interpret that. I got my babies and my mom is down. Got, Matt's, <laughs> Matt's system's entertaining, though. You know what we're doing, Mike? We're learning how to translate. I've got a, Matt's it's for the people. Measuring system into the real measuring system. It's for the people. Yeah, it's, it's four and three baby lines and one big daddy line. What is that? And I'm supposed to, like, okay, that, the, I'm assuming the big daddy line's quarter and the, and the baby lines are eighths. So if he said that to me, four and one big daddy line and three baby lines, what is that? That's a quarter plus three sixteenths, right? So that's, that's how I would pour four and seven sixteenths. But then I have to calculate that. Cause I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what, Matt's method. And, I, and sometimes he switches from that to baby, all baby lines. And then I'm like, hey, okay, I cut it to your baby lines. Oh no, it's wrong. I'm like, well, you told me seven baby seven lines. Baby that should be seven sixteenths. No, no, no. I, I, was, I meant, no. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, Matt. Right on, Matt. I just have to start building and figure out what it looks like. I might put the uppers on the outside, and when the timbre doors come, we'll just move them. Do we want to have it to where you just build the entire thing and it walks up to here? No. I don't think so. The middle cabinets, the lower cabinets in between. I think so. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll look better. I think it'll look good flanking the beams. I think those beams should be exposed. Yeah. So we could either then eventually put a, you know, a locker here. Correct. Or just no lockers. No, I think I think we do lockers on the left and right, yeah. outside of the beam. So what did we come up with? How far the cabinets come past the beam? Lower cabinet. I think we're going to want to actually probably end up doing. And your uppers, it's getting uppers too, right? Yeah. I think They're we may end up wanting to do two sets of, of, of uh... Either way, there's going to be uppers to the same yeah. width as the lowers. Yeah. And then Not you... all the way across because we have space for TV. Right, in between. But yeah. But on the ends, yeah. We'll yeah. see how it goes. So we're unboxing all the uh, Sonic MSS Plus cabinets right now. Um, we're going to keep them on the pallets. So that way we can kind of just move them into position. Uh, we've got an array going here. That 1540 is kind of pretty much where it goes and we got another array over there. So we're gonna unbox, unwrap, keep them on the pallet and then kind of cart them 
exactly where they need to go because they've got rubber feet. So once you get them down on the Swiss tracks, they're kind of hard to push around and stuff like that. So definitely want to get them you know, as close as we can. Um, the nice thing about MSS Plus, it, you know, we've got a few install videos, but it, it's a little different from MSS because we can put these exactly where they're supposed to go up against the wall. You know, you want to leave about you know, two and a half inch gap, two inch gap, and then we can install all the back panels and pipes and everything from, um, from the position where they're going to be, like without having to get behind them or anything like that. Uh, so it makes the install so much easier. After putting uh, Matt's MSS back together in the Yarn, the Yarn HQ garage, um, I, I know why MSS Plus is so good uh, because you can just put it in place, build it right where it needs to be, and it's awesome. So we're gonna get unboxing all this and then uh, kind of start moving things into place. Three different arrays that we have um, going in are kind of serving all different purposes because we've got the, the workshop array, which is the L array around the lift. That's where all the tools are going to go and, and um, you know, maybe some detailing supplies and stuff like that. The sink is going to go over there. And then on this wall back here is going to be kind of like the multi multimedia area where um, we're going to have the TV and Dyn Audio and stuff like that. So that'll be a little bit more focused on that. Um, and then back in this side, because there's not really anything on this side of the garage other than cars being stored, um, we're going to have kind of like a little just meeting space or, or relaxing space with like a few cabinets and then like some chairs. Um, very non mat type of setup, but it's going to be good and it's going to help kind of bring the entire space together, I think. So over here, we're gonna have uh, a 154012 drawer right in the middle, flanked by the um, 890 double door cabinets. I don't usually spec a lot of double doors because they're not really super useful for storing a lot of stuff. Um, I really prefer drawers, but because we have so many cabinets going in, it made more sense to have something that was just a little bit more um, I guess simple. Um, so having the double doors is going to work uh, pretty well for this. Same thing over in the uh, multimedia area. We've got kind of the opposite. We've got two double doors in the middle flanked by 1540s and then lockers as well. So that'll be good for storing any kind of multimedia stuff and any other tools that possibly don't fit in the main array. Um, and then we've got 1540 going in the corner. Um, and then we are actually gonna use the 360 cabinet, the 360 millimeter, to hopefully transplant the Jumbo 9's uh, power unit into the cabinet. So we're gonna take that and put it in there. You can't really do that with a Jumbo 7 because it's got the big lever on top, um, but the Jumbo 9 has the buttons. So we should be able to kind of just put that plate right in the front of the cabinet. Um, and, and make that work pretty well. And then we've got you know, various 720 tool drawers and stuff like that, and then a sink that's gonna be um, on the end. So. Is there anything in the wash basin? Um, not yet. We will have later in the year, they're on back order. You know, they've been uh, manufactured. Um, we've got the 720 timbre door wall cabinets coming for the, right above the, um, the bucket filler basically. So we'll have three right between those columns, um, which will be cool for like storing, um, you know, detailing supplies and towels and chemicals and stuff like that in the wash bay. So this is the, the 1540 millimeter 12 drawer from Sonic that has, you know, kind of the normal size drawers, the, the 720 size, as well as the 890. Technically it's 820 on that side of the cabinet but it has a big giant drawer across the top that lets you just fit a ton of stuff. Um, 
this is like the cabinet to get when you're specking out your garage, specking out your cabinet array, make it kind of the centerpiece of what you're doing. And it's, uh, it's awesome. So we got plenty of, shoot, what's the uh, code? Zero, zero, zero. So we got full depth, giant drawer on top. Sometimes when they, when they ship them, they've got the grease on there, so you need to go kind of behind and, and clean these up before you start putting tools in. Um, and then we've got you know, full depth 890 size. So this is technically 820 millimeters and 720 millimeters. Because it's not a full cabinet, we're no, we don't have the, the full side piece here to make it 890. And then same thing here. This ends up just being 720. So it's a little bit different size than like an 890 cabinet, but the drawers are the same. And of course we have the power bar mounting down below. US spec, these cabinets do not come with power bars, um, despite what you might see online somewhere. They're not included, so you do have to spec those separately. This one, so the bottom two drawers have the, the power bar brackets ready to go. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the one you want. So this one is gonna be going over in the corner array on the left side. Hold uh, probably a majority of like the XD sized foam inlays, which will go in here. So the foam inlays, you've got the XD size, and then these fit a medium, but they end up with a little bit of a gap in the back because the mediums only, you know, they only go to like right there. The cool thing about the XDs is you can fit a medium sideways and you can fit two of them. So you can do a medium tool inlay right here and then another one right there. So this, you know, this setup was spec'd out, you know, in the early days. We've been working on this garage for a year and a half and we did a lot of 720 drawers on top of, you know, doing, doing these 1540s. Now when I'm designing cabinet arrays, you know, really wanting to spec out as many of the 890 size as you can. That way you can do a large foam inlay, which fills up this section, an XD size, which fills up the entire thing, or you can do two medium size. So the 890s are really the, the bread and butter of tool storage to be able to load in as much as you possibly can. Um, so you get like an eight drawer, 890, and just fill it to the brim with probably you know 900 thousand tools or something like that so these will hold a ton um, and then we'll have you know a supplemental other uh, 720s to go along with it so all right so we just got this unloaded off pallet so we had you know four individual units here these aren't bad at all these are a couple hundred pounds these are like six seven hundred pound monstrosities and it took you know several of us to get it cantilevered off the pallets and everything and, and pushed into place. Um, but this is gonna be the, the multimedia setup. So we'll have uh, audio, video, and everything going on over here. And this will be just kind of a cool kind of centerpiece for the garage as you, as you come in and see this. So the plan is to have uh, back panels for the entire thing. So we got the MSS Plus um, back panels, which are 50 millimeters deep or thick. So we'll have to probably bring this one off the wall a little bit. Um, but we're gonna have upper cabinets up here and, and above this and above this. So we'll have a, a 720 on this side and an 820 on this side. The nice thing about the 1540s, as you can see, we have a 720 on the end because of this, but then over here, it's opposite. We've got the 890 side or the 820 side on the end. So what we can do to make the upper cabinet symmetrical and so that everything looks good, um, we can have the back panel and the post that goes in between. It actually gives you mounting points so that you can, you can put it on one side or the other. So we can have 720, 720, and then the 820s in between um, and keep it kind of symmetrical that way. Um, and then in the middle, We'll have just blank, blank, um, full height back panels that'll go up, you know, 82 inches. And then that's where the TV is gonna go. So we've got the, the Sony um, 77 inch that, that'll fit 
you know, right perfectly in between. I think we've got like a full motion mount. That way we can, well, we should have a full motion mount. That way we can bring it kind of out a little bit and it won't be, won't be sunk too much into the, you know, the, the upper cabinets back there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the general plan. We'll have 965 lockers over there and over here on this side. We've got Prevost that's going to be plumbed all the way over and then come down this wall. So we're going to have a hose reel and a hose reel here. Um, that way we have access, you know, for the other cars that are over here to fill tires and, and charge and stuff like that. Um, so I think now, you know, my, my goal is to get these all kind of just lined up and leveled. Yeah, it's uh, good to see these out of the boxes and on the floor and coming together. So with the, the cabinets in place, um, I'm going to start leveling. And what I want to do is, is level these two first. Probably I'll just start with this one, get it level, match this one up to it. I'm going to make sure all the, you know, the feet are hitting the ground. It's nice and solid. So we'll get these two going. And then I'll do the outside ones um, after that. This guy, the quarter inch M12 from Milwaukee has, I've put like some hours in with this, getting all of the MSS at the, you know, OG lined up. And then now I'm going to use it for here. So like if you're buying uh, MSS plus cabinet array, like just get one of these, just do it. You could do a three eighths or a quarter inch, but like I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. So I just want to kind of get a baseline of where I'm at. Obviously that, that leg's not even touching. And with the other three on, we're a little high over here. This ruler is a little big and I'm gonna make sure that I'm not hitting the other two cabinets. So I'm just doing it diagonally. Yeah, so I'm high in the back. Actually worse over here than I was this way. So I'm gonna bring this side up just a smidge. We got these little rubber, rubber feet. So in here we've got a five millimeter Allen key for the feet. Um, which allows you to obviously level these from inside the cabinet so you don't have to get under there or have to deal with like a, you know, a, um, a face plate underneath or anything like that, a uh, kick plate. So makes it pretty easy. You'll see with the M12, it's a piece of cake. Every single cabinet, yep, because you got to get it lined up dead on. And then whatever cabinet you start with, like that becomes like the cornerstone basically. So if your first one's not perfect, then all the other ones are gonna be off into, you know, exponentially as you move farther and farther out. The corner cabinets are the, the most time consuming because you've got so many different, I think you've got like six feet or something like that, maybe, maybe five feet and it's kind of awkward. So this one to get it level now that I've got two feet that are on the ground and two other feet that can kind of float. I know I can bring it back. So I'm going to bring this front leg up a little bit. Well, down. Uh, it depends on which way you think about it. And you may find that even as you go to the next cabinet and you get it butted up, the first cabinet wasn't as uh, straight as you thought. So then you got to kind of go back and and touch it up a little bit again. That's the process for leveling, just kind of going back and forth. You know, think of uh, tightening lug bolts or something you do, star pattern, and just keep going around until you get it, get it exact. Um, so I'm gonna keep kind of working on this one and then move on uh, down the line. It's fun. So this is the L-shaped cabinet array. So we're gonna start to set this up. We're missing some pieces from this. You know, this stuff is so hard to get. You know, any anything, especially high-end goods like this, are just you know, manufacturing is kind of a disaster. And so we we're, we're gonna put together what we have. Uh, but this is the fun part when you start to put the cabinets together and put the stuff in the drawers and see how it's all, you know, all this stuff coming together, like there's so much work just to get that lift set up to be able to put these cabinets in place. 
you know, and all these hose reels and, you know, I, I, what did I think? I, I think we were 400 man hours or something in just on day four or something like that. If you add it all, it's all up, it's pretty, it seems so, when it's done, it's going to look so simple, so yeah. basic and simple and nice, but you, won't, you don't see all the work that outside of even what we've done. And so the cabinet array is always fun to, fun to put together. But this corner cabin's massive. Just, just spin it. I'll just lean it back, get that pallet out of there, and we're good to go. Here's the setup. Now, we're missing a few cabinets, but um, we have a portable, a portable 890 millimeter wide cabinet, which will hold a bunch of tools. And that's going to go in between the lift controller and the quarter inch cabinet. And then the, the quarter inch, the corner cabinet. So corner cabinet is the base sets sets the you know sets how all the cabinets are going to go together. We have eight drawer 720s, a three drawer 720 720 wide. Uh, we're missing a sink. The sink that we had was damaged in shipping, um, so we're going to have to skip the sink for now. Uh, and then we have a recycling that's going to go somewhere in this vicinity. So we're just kind of piecing it together. Kyle's leveling out all the legs as we're walking through this. And, um, you know, you, you put it down on paper, we design it on, Kyle designs it on, on Home Designer, and then when you get it in person, it's kind of like designing a Swiss Tracks floor, you lay it out on digitally, and then you, you know, adjust as you get it in place, as you get it in the, in the, uh, in the area. And so this, this array will take us a few hours to build, I'm just kind of bringing everything into position just so I can look at it. And then Kyle's our leveling master, he gets everything leveled out. And, Set, a, set us up for, uh, for countertops. Uh, we do have some uppers going in here too, but we have to kind of lay it out first and we'll figure out how that's, gonna, how that's gonna go. Again, with global supply, we're short some of the cabinets we're hoping to have uh, and uh, we're, we're, we should have, you know, in, in a few months have, have this cabinet array put together completely. But we want to make it look good for today. This cabinet's cool. This is the, uh, this is the recycling bin. So this thing has a separator. So you're really not gonna do all that trash. I think one is microfiber towels and the other is trash. But it's freaking giant, it's way cool. All right, so we're getting most of the leveling done now. Um, we've got you know the, the two arrays on the front and the back. And then we've got this L array. So pretty much all this right side for now is leveled, good to go. Um, I've got to lock these two cabinets together. There's a, a nut and a bolt that go up under that you can usually reach. I might have to remove this kind of swing door, but uh, that kind of you know, locks the cabinets together here. But we got this edge all the way across, nice. Level is important, but it's almost more important for the cabinets to just line up together really well. Um, so like right now, I've got a little bit of a, a rake to the back. So like if you were gonna you know, put a ball on here, it might start rolling just a little bit, but it's consistent all the way. And basically I had to do that because of this cabinet, the way they welded it. It was a, I don't know if it was just off or, I just couldn't get it to where it was dead level here and level everywhere else, because these, these uh, corner cabinets are pretty difficult. Um, so basically I just matched it up all the way. So I make sure that these, these seams are dead on and then these corner seams going all the way across are perfect. Uh, that way, once you put your countertops on there, it looks really good. So the next step um, from here is to start putting all the back panels and the posts, just like we did on um, the multimedia array over there. Um, and like I've mentioned before, nice thing about MSS Plus is we can put everything in place, leave enough space for the wire pipes or the, the posts um, to go back there with your your uh, bolts for the for the keyholes in the back. Um, I did find out uh, now that I've done this a few times that you want to have your cabinets pretty much 29 inches off the wall if you have a baseboard. Um, these baseboards are pretty high, so it needed to be a little bit off. Um, if you have low baseboards, you could probably get away with like 28 and a half. That ends up being perfect. Um, so next step, we'll get the, the back panels on, and then from there, pretty much you just put the upper cabinets on, and then the very last step is um, the uh, countertops, which 
can kind of be a little bit of a pain because then you got to start removing the top drawer so you can get drills in there and stuff like that. But we're, uh, we're moving right along. So I'll probably have this done here in uh, just a little bit. making some progress here. Got the uppers in on this side. TV's mounted. All of these are gonna have power, which is cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's walk through the, the completion, the current completion of the cabinets. We've completed everything that we have. Uh, there's a few other parts and pieces that'll be coming in in December. It's November now, uh, so uh, I'll be coming back. We'll be coming back to do a final you know, shoot when the garage doors and all that stuff get here. Uh, but uh, I think this this array, I think, turned out absolutely fantastically well. Uh, I love how this turned out. The uh, Saha. Um, Raz from, from Saha uh, built these in a day, these countertops, which turned out really, really great. Stained in a really amazing black finish that uh, really turned out great. Um, so two 1540s, when I build my garage, I'm going to do nothing but these. I think this is the greatest cabinet to ever exist. Uh, we got some organization to do here, but I have laid out some stuff. I don't want to mess up my uh how i put all these things in here um but uh, my vision is to have because most people won't have this size drawer but to have all the all the milwaukee stuff all all dialed in uh like this only in uh, tool grid uh, so i'm working on that but the uppers uh i think are are, are great you know i'm six two and so you have Anything short of, say, whenever that is, anything short of 6'9", 6 6'10", 6 uh, you should easily be able to fit under the cabinets. Uh, the other thing we'll be doing, I'll be doing some under cabinet lighting as well um, that uh, we'll probably set up here at some point uh, in the future. Uh, but this array of two 1540s, two 890 millimeter, by the way, when I say 1540, and I mean 1,540 millimeters wide, uh, the combination of this setup and then putting the, the core 59s the core sub next to it and then putting my uh, NAD C685 in the middle here is perfect absolute perfection even if, if you could just fit this array in your garage it change your life it's so freaking good it's so good I'm so excited for uh, for John and how the how this turned out so this, this array is a, a bit incomplete, but still looks, I think it looks great. Uh, so we decided to put the Sonic tops um, on this array, really to kind of test them out. I haven't done these tops. Uh, they do this a uh, little less than one inch, like three quarter inch thick tops, uh, which are sort of ergonomically designed for the height of these, of these cabinets. Uh, the cabinets end up being when off the wall about 20, about 29 inches uh, in depth. So in a regular two car garage, you're gonna have a hard time fitting these, the depth of these cabinets. Um, but you know, this is where the magic is, the combination of Sonic cabinets and then Sonic foam inlays with their tools. Um, uh, we have, I think four more drawers worth of tools that should be here in a, in a week or so. Uh, but the, the, the smoothness of the drawer glides. You know, List, uh, Rousseau, they have Austrian drawer glides, which are, which are better than these, but I like the function and the feel of a normal ball bearing drawer glide uh, rather than the Austrian glides because we're not putting 500 pounds in a drawer. These will hold a couple of hundred pounds a piece. These are smoother. Uh, and then they have that nice engagement and that nice clicked engagement, but look how freaking awesome the 1540 top drawer where it's at. 
I want him to make a cabinet that has nothing but this, these, these side drawers someday. Then you saw us do, uh, if you went and watched the lift video, sorry, we're doing some, some footage offloading. If you went and uh, checked out the lift video, uh, Mike actually put the noose bomb lift uh, pump inside of the cabinet. And I did my thing with wiring so that it stays nice and out of the way. Uh, but we have our lift controller, so our up down, so our on off, and the magic green, the green button. We don't know what it does, but it does something um, on the front of the of the cabinet. And really, I don't think it could look any better than that. Just in, absolutely incredible. We do have um, we do have a rolling cart as well. So this rolling cart will come out, and then it bump stops into the back of the cabinet. So there's actually um, rubber bump stops that will help you help you position it, and you can lock it in place so it stays here. Um, but this is a rolling cart. Um, I'm not sure that this. Um, we have it. We have an extra deep that was uh, intended to go here. Uh, so we'll probably swap for the extra deep cabinet because this uh, this is a large drawer, uh, and we probably want to go with uh, with a deeper version after you know after playing with this, uh, and um, you know we'll, we'll 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 make that decision as uh, when the rest of the cabinets show up. We're waiting on the 360 countertop as well. Now the corner cabinet is absolutely insanely massive. Um, you can fit so much stuff in there. It's incredible. It goes all the way to the wall. Uh, the corner cabinet they don't make uppers for, um, and uh, I think that from a functional standpoint, uh, you know, having this area without uppers makes sense. Uh, but we do have some of the timber doors coming, which Kyle is enamored with. Uh, he loves those things. Um, a timber door. Think of like a big bread basket, like a big bread drawer. Uh, it has like an accordion style door that comes all the way down. So we do have some timbre doors and we do have uppers coming as well as a sink. Unfortunately, our sink got damaged in shipping. Uh, and so there is a sink going here and then another closet going here. So even as substantial as the array of cabinets that we have here is pretty amazing. Uh, there is more awesome coming. Uh, so we'll have 720 uppers all the way across here. This will be our open top area. Uh, and uh, and uh, this this cabinet array, array will round out nicely here in the future. The um, I haven't set this drawer up yet, so don't judge me. But uh, this is going to be our power drawer where everything plugs in and charges. Uh, this these char this charges a little deep for the upper cabinets, uh, so I actually think it's going to work out better in here. And I'll probably line up all the Milwaukee batteries in the drawer above. But the th three drawer, this one's pretty neat with these three giant you know, 12 inch tall drawers are pretty, pretty fantastic. And then of course, if you want, you could lock the drawers. I'm not sure why you would do that here out in rural Georgia, but you could if you wanted to. The recycling bin will be combination microfiber towel and garbage. Uh, and then of course you can throw things in here, um, but this will become our, our microfiber towel area. The, we actually have a speed cream washer and dryer in the, in the closet behind. So we do have, uh, we do have, so as I mentioned, we have a sink and another closet. We do have two closets that are gonna be flanking the, the main center array here as well. Uh, they're 965 millimeters wide. We have one of them here in the, uh, in the wash bay utility area. And Mike's, Mike's gonna be working on here, finishing up the, uh, the plumbing. But this is, uh, this is where We'll store our gallons and our, uh, our extra towels and things like that. So um, I just kind of loosely put everything in there or put some of the things in here that are going to be in here. But this is our kind of overflow. We do have, so we have two more kind of going for the utility room and we have uh, two more going on the main array. They're just, they're in transit. The thing that's going to be really cool for the wash bay area is right above the hose bib here, we have three of the tall timbre door cabinets, the accordion style cabinets, which is where you'll keep your, all your wash material, all your stuff you need for washing the car. Uh, our buckets will be housed here, so we'll have a couple of sets of OG buckets. Uh, our our um, hoses will be docked to the right and left of this setup, this array. So when those get here, the wash bay will, will be complete. And then we have this bonus array 
which I'm using currently until the, the big closets get here, I'm using as, uh, as my like waterless wash and polishing area. This is our bonus setup. Uh, this top is a little short, so we have another top coming. This top is actually going upstairs. This is the car area. Uh, and so this will be like the SeaTech charger bay where you put your SeaTech chargers. This will be where we have, um, uh, again, probably waterless washing equipment uh, and uh, other little things we'll keep in here. Really, it's just a bonus array to kind of break up the enormity of this area of the garage for parking cars. But I think this really turned out great. You know, right now I have uh, polishing pads in here and our polishing and coatings set up in here uh, and all of our polishing equipment next here. But this this stuff is will probably end up going in one of those those big closets next to the uh, next to the lift, and then I'll be doing you know, this will be our charging area, and then I've got uh, got my polishers in here as well. But we'll 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 keep tweak, tweaking where things go. So that's a wrap for this part of the series. I promise. Uh, I know I've been promising that I would go out to Nick's garage in Colorado. Uh, I've been promising I'd go up to the garage we did in, uh, in, uh, in New Jersey, and I haven't. Uh, but I will be back here in Atlanta in a few months uh, finishing this project. Um, this, uh, the cabinets, I'm telling you, Sonic MSS Plus is just absolutely fantastic. It's my, it's my favorite combination of cabinets because of fit, finish, the style, the color. Uh, I do love the aluminum handles. Uh, we have done some custom versions for people, uh, but I love the look of the, the look of the contrast of the black cabinets with the aluminum finish here. And I, I, I love the, 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 the drawer operations fantastic. Combined with that, put that in the sonic foam inlay system and you've got, I think the most magical com ca combination of dealership grade cabinets that are made that can be used in a consumer garage like this. I gotta dust that off. We sell these cabinets. Um, it is really helpful to me if you buy the Sonic and Sabre stuff from me. I've seen pretty much every cabinet in the world in person. I've had hands on, eyes on. I'm telling you, these are my favorite cabinets. It took me three years of fighting to convince the guys at Sonic to let me sell this stuff. I'm not selling it because I can, I'm selling it because I want it for myself from my own garage. I do own quite a bit of these cabinets. They are very expensive. It's a once in a lifetime purchase. If you're fortunate enough to be able to get these cabinets in your life, uh, you will not be disappointed. So hit us up, uh, hit up um, uh, support at obsessedgarage.com uh, or design at obsessedgarage.com. If you want Kyle to lay out a design for you, you can do a 3D walkthrough mock uh, like we did for this garage and um, and set you up with exactly what you need. Just know we need to order them ahead of schedule because they um, they are hard to get. Uh, and uh, we ordered some obscure stuff uh, that's on a boat sitting out there swirling, you know, s swirling around, uh, hoping to get it port in port at some point. But uh, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the series. And uh, I'm excited for the wrap up of this uh, massive uh, garage here in Atlanta. Thanks for watching.